Welcome to another edition of America in Black. I'm CBS News correspondent Jerika Duncan. It's any family's worst nightmare. Someone you love never makes it home from school, work, or a walk with friends. In this country, black women and girls are disproportionately represented among those who are missing, and they're less likely to get the resources and media attention needed to bring them home. Often, the work to find our black women and girls falls on grieving families. This is the story of two of those families and their search for answers. It's the homecoming Lisa Allen dreads. This is the house that we lived with my sister. She recently returned to Hot Springs, Arkansas, a place that holds nightmarish memories, a reminder of what she's lost. She was last seen walking over this bridge here. Uh, that bridge did not get her home that night. I didn't get her home. In December of 1985, Lisa's sister, Jeffrey Lynn Smith, was last seen walking home with her boyfriend. That was 39 years ago. My pain that I feel when I think about her is still sharp like a knife. It's not, after 39 years, sometimes I can't even breathe. Lisa called her little sister Lynn. She was the second born, described as bright and responsible, a 16-year-old who enjoyed writing to Lisa while she was away at college. When I think about my sister, all I think about is sweetness, and she's a fastinista. She loved her dress. She loved taking care of herself, loved to dance. She loved her music. The Gap Band was her favorite band. And I think the most important thing was that she was somebody that had dreams and she had some hopes for her life. And um, somebody took that away from her. Take me back to that December 4th, 1985 day when she went missing and immediately because this is not normal for your sister to just vanish, your family starts looking for her. Yeah, my mother reported her missing that next day. It was not like her not to come home. What was the police reaction? Initially, it was like no reaction, really. Lisa says when her family reported Lynn was missing, authorities labeled her a runaway, which meant no search teams and no press conferences. Police said they questioned Lynn's boyfriend and a few locals but they never had an official suspect. I had to actually look at the police report all these years later to see what was in it. And I literally had to redline the whole thing up because it was full of so many inconsistencies and outright falsehoods. Like? Like they said, my mother said my sister would return home. And obviously, that never happened. The only media coverage for this missing black girl in the South was an ad in the local paper, paid for by her family. As weeks turned to years, Lisa decided to extend her reach by creating a YouTube channel. If it were your channel, wouldn't you want somebody to come through with some information? If we could have got that exposure, we might not even be sitting here right now. My family might not suffer all these years. Black women missing in this country is an enduring epidemic. They make up roughly 7% of the population, but in 2022 represented over 35% of missing women and girls. On average, cases involving black women stay open four times longer than other cases. Every case is a priority, whether it's a recently missing person or a cold case. Sister-in-laws Natalie and Derricka Wilson run the Black and Missing Foundation. They started the nonprofit in 2008 after a young Black woman, Tamika Houston, received hardly any news coverage at a time when others did. Fun, smart, amazing, and beautiful. We're not asking for anything special. We're asking for the same level of media coverage and law enforcement resources as others. Today is a Saturday. How many calls have you gotten today alone? We average at least 25 a day. Shakinia Pate has been missing since 1998, eight years old. Alexis Ware, 29 years old, missing. Shariah Williams never returned home from school. Walk me through that process when you get a phone call. Oftentimes, the families do feel like no one is listening and that we're their last hope. 
We create flyers for families so the families can distribute and share with their network. We have had self-defense classes. We have media training. We see the issue, we recognize it, and we want to provide the resources. Police are required to document when children are reported missing, but some are counted twice and some are never reported to the police, meaning there is no way of knowing exactly how many kids are missing at any given time. We know that one in every three children that go missing, they're solicited for sex. A lot of the pimps and pedophiles are utilizing social media to interact and to groom these children into getting comfortable talking to them and then luring them away from their home. When it comes to black females, experts say a disproportionate number of those who go missing and run away are more likely to have experienced domestic violence and sexual assault. So this is Janai's room. It is not exactly the way she left it. Tanisha Howard's daughter, Janaya, went missing on June 23rd of 2022. This is something she made when she was a kid. She believes Janaya, who was 15 at the time, was lured away from home by someone online. Like many teenagers, her mom says Janaya spent hours on the phone just about every day. I want people to know the fact is my baby was kidnapped and she was lured offline and I didn't give anyone permission to take her. And she was a minor. I want people to know that and take that very serious. Tanisha says a year earlier, Janiah shared that she had been sexually assaulted. It's been nearly two years. She didn't just leave on her own. She was coached. She was groomed. When Tanisha first went to Milwaukee police, she says they told her Janiah's case could not be categorized as critical missing. For that, authorities have a number of criteria, including having a physical mental issue which subjects themselves or others to danger. When I went for help, it was like it wasn't there from the people that's paid to serve and protect. There was lack of concern. I said, well, my child is missing. They go, well, how old is your child? I said, she's 15. Oh, well, no, ma'am, she's not a child, she's a teenager. This is normal. One officer said, look, we can't put Janiah's case um, on top of everything. And he pointed to a shelf, like, we have hundreds of missing cases in, in Milwaukee. How much of that do you attribute to Janiah being Black? If she was a white girl missing, they would have done everything. Like, this little girl is missing. We need your help. Let's make search parties. I didn't get any of that. They would have done something. I know they would have. And you're saying that based off of what? Just seeing it on the news before with other um, missing white girls, even if they're adults, they get national attention. They don't even have to be children. When we contacted the Milwaukee Police Department, they would only say they continue to seek Janiah. My daughter, she... Very, very intelligent. She was a fun person, very protective, very soft-spoken. It's been so hard not having you here with us. We all love you, Janiya. You know, we want you to come home. Policymakers are taking note. Last year, Democrat Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota co-authored a bill to create an office for missing and murdered black women and girls within the Department of Justice. It's past time as a country that we stop treating certain people <laughs> as throwaways. If passed, the legislation could provide funding to review cold cases and pay for bias training for police officers. Do you see this piece of legislation as expanding what the Black and Missing Foundation has already done? Yes, this is codifying it, uh, creating a, a national office um, that has resources dedicated to it. Mm. And it is about time that the federal government says, we believe in this work and we are going to fund this work. How likely is this bill to pass and become a national law? Sometimes things do move slowly on a federal level, but we are optimistic that there is really great conversations happening. There is good coverage of the problem and I am going to keep pushing until we get it done. Until then, Lisa Allen continues to investigate her sister Jeffrey Lynn's disappearance in Hot Springs, Arkansas. 
Police there acknowledged in an email, if that same scenario had played out today, it probably would have been handled very differently. I'm invigorated by this. I'm feeling like this is part of the journey I've been trying to get to, and it finally arrived. When you think about your sister's legacy, what do you want it to be? Even though she's not with us, everything I do is in honor of her. And that's her legacy because until my last breath, I will be searching for her.